I knew if Sylvia could make the mic, I could too, so we're in good stead. Uh, I, I got to say thanks again for the wonderful turnout um, that uh, you guys have afforded us here this morning. It's terrific. Uh, I have a couple uh, stories. Sylvia said, mm, stories are the best. I said, fine, I'll tell a couple stories. But first, um, experience. How do you get it? Take every damn job you can get your hands on, and I'll tell you why. In this kind of a market, Philadelphia, it's not New York, it's not L.A. You can't just make a living from maybe just doing feature films. You can't make a living from just doing commercials. They're just doing theater. You really have to put your hat in the ring of all these different uh, venues of how to make a living. You have to work commercials. You have to do corporate films. You have to do feature films. You have to do uh, theater to get yourself into certain places that turn one job into another into another. Quick story, I'm sick in bed with the flu and I'm doing a show 27 years ago. It's a little piece uh, that we did for a long time in this town called Sheer Madness. And I was kind of in the business for about eight, 10 years and uh, my wife uh, was kind of concerned about me in the business and, and the future of it. So she finds out her brother was just married the week before at the Sheraton Hotel up in King of Prussia. She found out Bob Hope was staying at the same hotel. And her brother uh, spent the night, his honeymoon, in the uh, penthouse. So she said, calls her brother, gets the number, calls the penthouse at the Sheraton Hotel, and damn it if Bob Hope doesn't pick up the phone. And she says, Mr. Hope, I know that you've not had this question posed to you before, but my husband is in the business and he's trying to make a living. What kind of experience, what kind of advice would you give? And my wife Barbara said there was a couple second delay and Bob Hope said on the other line, Dal, and that's how he spoke, get him out on the street, let him take every job he can get, and sooner or later the business will tell you whether you have it or not and you can stay in and make a living or not, or move on. Um, another quick story. I'm doing one of my first film things, and this is really my first film lesson. And maybe some people in the audience even worked on that show. It was 1976, the bicentennial year, and they were making a historical film over uh, where they signed the Declaration of Independence at Independence Hall. I played one of the signers of it, and they brought in a lot of major players, Eli Wallach, and a whole bunch of uh, folks that had uh, professional names in the business, and you identified with them right away. They played the historical characters, and they all came in and played uh, or acted for scale. Director John Huston. The poor uh, man was close to the end of his life because he was on uh, oxygen at the time. But what a lesson I sat through watching. There was one scene where this actor got up and said maybe 10 seconds worth of dialogue. A couple other people got up and blah, blah. So he said, let's, uh, his name was Jack. I'll still remember it. He said, Jack, we're going to take a rehearsal on this. And he said, um, you know, everything's um, in place. Um, one actor got up. And Jack got up, said his lines. And there was a beat or two. And, uh, and John Huston said, uh, Jack, we'll do one more uh, run through, a little rehearsal again. He said, uh, do me a favor, take it down about half of what you were doing. And I'm sitting there as a novice and saying, we'll never hear this guy in this big room taking it down about half of what he was doing. So we went through another rehearsal. And, uh, and Mr. Houston said, fine, Jack, fine. Now we're going to shoot the next one. Uh, he said, uh, but just before we shoot it, Jack, take it down about half again. I said Are you, to myself, are you serious? This will never be heard. Well, I, I saw the finished product, and it was like the guy was screaming. It was this loud. So I said, well, there is an acting job in film that you have to learn how to work in film. It's a different media than television even. It's a different media than corporate films. It's a different media, certainly, than theater. Um, Mark uh, Rosenthal gave a, an indication of uh, sometimes how to get work. And sometimes you have to go to a writer to get work. I came up with that idea about four years ago for a, a piece of theater to do in this town, and I got a grant to do it. So I had some money to hire some people, and I went out and hired a good playwright who was a sports fan, and he wrote me the script for the Philly fan. And I've been doing that for about four years at different venues around town. Uh, I just finished my eighth time in doing it. So there's so many avenues as an actor, actress, 
in this city, this market, that you can churn up a living. Uh, when you get advice from people like Mike Lemon and, and the folks that make movies, uh, really listen because they've gone through the whole uh, experience themselves by working in the, uh, in the profession for years in this town. Uh, the, uh, the other thing I wanted to say was, uh, as far as filmmaking is concerned, uh, Screen Actors Guild has been a presence in this town for a lot of years, and at the first beginnings of movies finally coming to this town, they would only trust hiring extras, background people in this town. And we fought for a long while to have them at least audition some principal players in this town to find out what the acting community was, how deep it was, and the level of expertise. We finally got them to start auditioning for principal players in this town. And over the years, a film comes in now, and they know that they're going to cast some locals. They know, uh, because it's a small little town out there in Hollywood, they talk, they know that Philadelphia is reliable. They can go into town, they can cast actors, actresses that can walk and talk and chew gum at the same time and be reliable in a film. So uh, put the tentacles out. Get every chance you can to get a job. Audition for every... I was a bartender before I got in this business full time and I remember once a guy came into the bar who I knew and he was having a sandwich and a beer. So at lunchtime and uh, he said, Tom, I'm shooting a corporate film over here for the company I work for. And he said, somebody told me you act. And I said, yeah. And he said, uh, boy, you might be right for it. I said, you got any, any dialogue from that thing? He says, yeah. I said, come here. I took him back in the kitchen of this restaurant where I work at, and I auditioned him in front of the oven there where they cook the roast beef. <laughs> and I got the damn job. Uh, and it was one of the ways, it was one of my ways to transition my time from working in the bar business to becoming a full-time actor. So the dreams are so important to everybody. Keep the dreams alive and, and, and get out there and, and audition for every, every chance you get. Because experience, like the Army says, it was called OJT, as I remember when I was in the Army, on-the-job training. It's the best. Thank you.